everybody, this is Tyler here once again from the Character Workshop, where as they always say, third time's the charm. So today we are finally talking about Series 3 of Blackadder, which this time around is titled Blackadder the Third. And basically this series takes place around a period which is known in England as the Regency period, which was basically the late 18th century to the early 19th century. So this time around, uh, Blackadder is basically in this period, and also, once again, we get the return of Baldrick. But unfortunately, unlike the previous two series, uh, Percy does not make another appearance. Um, from what I've heard, uh, Tim McGurney, the actor that played the character, didn't want to be typecast, so the character was written off. But instead, Percy was replaced by a character by the name of Prince George Regent, played by Hugh Larry. So, without further ado, let's get started uh, talking about the six episodes that pretty much uh, take place during the events of Blackadder the Third. So the first episode we have is Dish and Dishonesty, which starts off with a newly appointed Prime Minister by the name of William Pitt the Younger, who was made to look like a, uh, a teenager, hence his younger name, who decides to do three new things for England to declare war on Napoleon Bonaparte, to give tougher sentences to geography teachers, and most of all, to strike Prince Regents from the civil list. And when the Prince hears about it, he wasn't convinced about it, as he thought the general public loved him by saying, we hail Prince George, but then uh, Blackadder, who is basically uh, Prince George's butler, corrects him by saying that the public was saying that we hate Prince George. And since the House of Commons was evenly divided on the issue, Blackadder gives the Prince the idea to tip the scales by bribing a member of Parliament by the name of Sir Talbot Buxamelli, I probably mispronounced his name, I do apologize, uh, with the position of the High Court Judge. So the Prince then calls for the uh, Buxamelli and he then assures the prince that, like, he will stand for him, but then, like, immediately dies when he sat down uh, due to his poor health. With no other options left, Blackadder decides to have Baldrick be the, uh, the new member of Parliament to ensure that uh, his votes uh, are in favor of the prince. So around the time of the election, uh, it was pretty obvious that the election was rigged as... The other three parties uh, didn't get any votes whatsoever, but uh, the party that Baldrick was for, which uh, was promptly titled the Theater Party, had about 16,472 votes. So because of that, Baldrick was made uh, the new member of Congress in a landslide victory, which was rigged. As Baldrick was now made a member of Parliament in the House of Commons, uh, William Pitt the Younger uh, manipulates Baldrick into voting the wrong way, and the issue proceeds to the House of Lords. Blackadder finds out and then plans to get himself appointed into the House of Lords, where he'll be able to vote against the bill, and even purchases a ludicrously expensive catskin robe in preparation. Unfortunately for Blackadder, his scheme was ruined by uh, Prince George's stupidity, and Baldrick was evolated instead, and Baldrick, of course, was given £400,000 for the bribe, and he decides to spend the money on uh, a giant turnip, and once Blackadder finds out, he uh, smashes Baldrick's head with the, the giant turnip. And now we get to epi episode two, which is Ink and Incapability. In this episode, Samuel Johnson, uh, who was apparently the creator of the dictionary, goes to Prince George for hoping to get some patronage for the new dictionary, which, from what I've heard, was actually a bit inaccurate since the dictionary was actually published more than 50 years before the events of the Regency period. And the Prince was interested in doing so, so he'll hopefully no longer be called uh, utter turnip head. Blackheader unfortunately tries to, you know, turn the Prince away from it. Um, saying that the dic dictionary was like the most pointless book in history, more so than How to Learn French was translated into French. 
Samuel Johnson arrives and shows the prince the dictionary. And the prince at first thought it was going to be a, a typical story about, like, you know, heroes, heroines, or villains. But of course, finds out that it's actually just a book about, like, inventing and using new words and was uninterested. But Blackadder then realizes that, um, uh, Johnson was not only, of course, gonna, you know, you know, patronize the dictionary, but was also planning on patronizing, uh, a book that, um, of course had Blackadder's name attached to it, Edmund, A Butler's Tale. So Blackadder then decides to change his plan after all and decides to, uh, persuade Prince George to support the dictionary. So then Blackadder tries to get, uh, the dictionary that Johnson gave to Prince George. However, Baldrick admits to Blackadder that he accidentally threw the dictionary into the fire for the prince. And Blackadder, of course, had to find another way to, you know, be able to, you know, get the dictionary patronized. Knowing that if he doesn't, you know, come back to Johnson with the copy of the dictionary, uh, he knows he's going to be killed if the copy doesn't show up. Blackadder decides to basically try to recreate the dictionary, um, which Johnson said uh, took him 10 years to do, so the fact that Blackadder had to do it, you know, in one night is going to be quite the task. Uh, Baldrick and Prince George tried to help, but of course, you know, their help didn't help Blackadder out. So the next morning, Johnson then arrives, uh, and Blackadder, you know, attempts to cover up his mistake about, like, burning the dictionary, but, uh, Johnson, Johnson was surprisingly calm and said the dictionary was a waste of time and tells Blackadder to throw it into the fire, and Blackadder, you know, was quite happy about it, but of course he realizes that, like, you know, his aunt appears out of nowhere and also Baldrick turned into an Alsadian, which was back then a British term for a German Shepherd. And because of that, Blackadder realized that he was dreaming. And he woke up from his dream, and then the real next morning, Johnson arrives and was about to kill Blackadder when Blackadder told them that he um, wasn't able to get the dictionary and accidentally burned it. Just as he was about to kill Blackadder, Prince George came out and said to Johnson that he loved the dictionary and he was actually holding a copy of the dictionary the whole time. It was revealed that the book that Baldrick burned into the fire was actually Blackadder's book that was going to be, you know, promoted alongside the dictionary. At the very end, Blackadder was very devastated that he wasn't able to get his novel to become a reality. Prince George, of course, you know, tries to, you know, make it feel better and tells Baldrick to light another fire. Of course, Baldrick, being the uh, the idiot that he is, um, <laughs> uh, burned the dictionary <laughs> into the fire. Then we get to episode three, which is titled Knob and Nobility. In this episode, Blackadder is very disgusted and not interested in the fact that throughout the entirety of England's uh, was obsessed with the Scarlet Pimpernel, who was basically a masked vigilante who saved a lot of the French aristocrats during the French Revolution. So because of Blackadder's hates for the Scarlet Pimpernel, two noble noblemen, uh, one named Topper, who... Topper was actually played by uh, uh, Tim McGurney, who, of course, as I mentioned earlier, played Percy Percy in the first two series of Blackadder. And the other one named Smedley, they bet to Blackadder a thousand guineas that he cannot go to France and rescue an Aristocat and present him at the French Embassy Ball. Blackadder accepts the bet, but instead of actually going into France like the bet was supposed to, he decides to take a different route by going to Mrs. Miggins' coffee house, which was uh, one of the more recurring settings of the show, and also Mrs. Miggins was the only other recurring character on Blackadder the Third besides our three main characters. So he tries to find a French aristocrat that's willing to pretend that he's been rescued. Uh, Le Comte de Froufrou, which is the name of the French aristocrat that Blackadder found, agrees to pretend that he was rescued. However, when they arrive at the embassy, uh, they were arrested by a revolutionary uh, who doesn't really have much of a name. So Blackadder, Frou-Frou, and of course Baldrick uh, were put in a dungeon, but Frou-Frou was later taken away by a revolutionary to be tortured. 
Uh, so Blackadder and Baldrig were later rescued by Smedley, who was uh, who claimed to be the real Scarlet Pimpernel that Blackadder was, you know, not too pleased about earlier in the episode. Uh, Blackadder then accidentally uh, poisoned uh, the glass of wine uh, in suicide pills that uh, Fru Fru gave to him earlier. Fru Fru managed to escape, and they all make it home. Fru Fru then reveals uh, just to be Topper in disguise and that he and the uh, mysteriously missing Smidley are together uh, the Scarlet Pimpernel. So basically both of them were the the Scarlet Pimpernel. And then moments away from exposing uh, Blackadder's treachery, uh, he accepts his offer of a glass of wine and dies. Blackadder having slipped another suicide pill into the glass. He then convinces the prince that he is the Scarlet Pimpernel and collects an enormous postal order intended for the hero. Now we're at episode four, which is sense and senility. Senility? I don't know. It's, uh, I might have butchered that word. I do apologize to everybody out there. In this episode, Blackadder takes Prince George to a theater, even though Prince George has the tendency to, like, you know, not realize that a theater play is, you know, fiction. Uh, for example, Blackadder mentioned that when they went to a, to a performance of Julius Caesar, the prince shouted, Look behind you, Mr. Caesar, uh, during the assassination scene. At the play, um, an anarchist uh, tries to, you know, take away Prince George's life, but um, Prince George, you know, after being told by Blackadder that it was just a play, he thought, um, you know, the assassination attempt was part of the play, but of course it ended up not being the case, and... Yeah, Prince George got uh, pretty hurt by it. Meanwhile, the prince hasn't really been seen uh, very positively in the in England's public eye. So Blackadder suggested to him that in order to improve his public image, he should write a speech um, for the prince to deliver to his father, King George III, as part of his birthday celebration. Prince George then decides to hire the two actors that him and Blackadder saw at the play the other nights to help him out with a speech. When the actors arrived at the place, this pretty much uh, led to definitely my favorite joke throughout the whole series. During, uh, you know, while they were there, uh, Blackadder, of course, was, um, you know, intentionally messing around with the, the actors by always mentioning Macbeth's name, and the actors, of course, like, you know, had to do, like, some sort of ritual, because apparently, from what I've heard, there was, like, a some sort of, like, a superstition about, like, mentioning Macbeth's name, uh, being, you know, very disastrous, so that was kind of why they did it, and Blackadder did it to them multiple times throughout the whole episode, and it was always pretty funny. After, of course, the actors sort of made fun of the speech that Blackadder wrote for the prince, uh, Blackadder was pretty upset by this, and decides to, you know, leave his position as the servant of Prince George, and decides to try to apply for being the king of Sardinia, um, after looking at a, uh, uh, apparently a newspaper advertisement for it. So, however, while he was on his way out, uh, Baldrick, um, which is very uncommon for him to do, actually insulted Blackadder by saying, Goodbye, you lazy, big-nosed, rubber-faced bastard. And then Baldrick then, like, you know, just comes back slowly into the place and, like, actually tells Baldrick, I wouldn't bet you a single groats that you would last five minutes here without me. Meanwhile, the two actors were rehearsing for their own play that they wrote, which was given a pretty long title, which was The Bloody Murder of the Foul Prince Romero and His Enormally Bosomed Wife. Baldrick overhears their conversation and mistook um, what they were saying as like an actual assassination attempt on Prince George, and of course, Blackadder as well. So Baldrick of course tells the prince about it, and they were all frightened about it. Blackadder surprisingly returns, revealing that he, um, he actually decided to take Baldrick up on the bets and mentioned to Baldrick, four minutes, 22 centers, Baldrick, you owe me a groat. So Baldrick ended up losing the bets. He then takes advantage of George's inability to tell fact from fiction and actually um, accuses the actors of conspiracy, claiming that the murder of Prince Ramiro is in fact their entire conspiracy printed and published in a play manuscript form, which got the actors arrested by a bunch of guards. And before, you know, they got arrested, Blackadder once again insults them by, you know, saying Macbeth again. Afterwards, Blackadder offers the prince a lead role in a new play, which uh, 
Blackout says the title is Thick Jack Clot Sits in the Stocks and Gets Pelted by Rancid Tomatoes, which, to the surprise, the prince, you know, not knowing what it was about, says excellent. So now we get to episode 5, which is Amy and... Amiability? Once again, I do apologize for the mispronunciation. But in this episode, Blackadder is in debt and tries to ask the prince for a raid race. The prince was also in debt, so the only other way for, you know, the both of them to, like, you know, earn a living is for Prince George to uh, marry a princess from, like, you know, another country. Blackadder, you know, looked through, you know, an entire list of, like, all of Europe's princesses, and unfortunately, most of them were unavailable, besides, um, one by the name of Amy Hardwood, who was the daughter of a powerful, um, bad-tempered industrialist. Blackadder, of course, you know, has made attempts to, like, you know, get the prince to, like, you know, marry her. However, unfortunately for, uh, Prince George, the only part of, um, marrying Amy that he cared about was, you know, the sex part, and made, like, all sorts of, like, you know, comments about sex, so Blackadder, in order to, you know, get Amy's approval, you know, pretends to be the prince just to, you know, get her to like the prince, and it all went well until Blackadder realized that, um, Amy's father, just like him and Prince George, are broke. Blackadder then decides to call off the wedding, and decided to go with Baldrick's original idea for Blackadder to earn money, and to become a highwayman, or, in other words, a a masked criminal. While Blackadder was doing this, he finds out that Amy was actually, in fact, a notorious highwayman by the name of The Shadow, who Baldrick was a huge fan of. And she actually pretends to be in love with Blackadder uh, to steal the prince's money and the wedding gifts. But of course, after having the ruse revealed to him and being tied up by her for her to be shot, uh, he was actually rescued by Baldrick, and Blackadder decides to turn Amy in for $10,000, and of course she ended up being arrested and hanged, which Prince George found out about and was very upset with. And then we finally get to the series finale, Duel and Duality. In this episode, Prince George uh, finally had some sort of sexual encounter, however it was with the two nieces of the Duke of Wellington. And because of that, uh, Blackadder warns the Prince that the Duke of Wellington will try to murder anybody who you know, tries to take sexual advantage of his relatives. So in order to hopefully, you know, get away from this, uh, Prince George decides to have Blackadder pretend to be Prince George so he can fight the Duke of Wellington. So basically they switched places. So Blackadder became the prince and then the prince became, you know, a butler. While Blackadder was of course not <clears throat> interested in sacrificing his life, he decides to hopefully get into contact with, um, his Scottish cousin named MacAdder, who, just like Blackadder, is also played by Rowan Atkinson. However, of course, MacAdder wasn't available to, you know, help with the fight. And then after so many attempts to try to get out of the fight, Blackadder unfortunately uh, wasn't successful and actually had to fight the Duke. Around the time of the duel, um, they fought not with swords or pistols, but they had to fight each other with the uh, Cannonettes, which are basically like little small cannons, which Blackadder, you know, pretending to be the prince was like, I thought we were supposed to fight with swords, and Wellington was like, Psh, swords are for women. If you guys have seen, like, you know, the previous two series of Blackadder, uh, you guys know that normally a lot of the finales, you know, ended up having Blackadder dying at the very end. You, we thought so for a little bit, but then uh, Blackadder revealed that um, he actually held a um, can of Cigarlo, um, in his, you know, uniform to, you know, protect from the hits. And the Duke, who, uh, of course didn't know that the Prince was Blackadder, actually admired him and declared, uh, the duel to be a draw. Uh, as he mentioned, God clearly preserves you for greatness. And the actual Prince George then shows up and reveals that he is the real Prince. The Welling Wellington wasn't convinced about it and, uh, <laughs> ends up shooting the actual Prince instead. So then we finally get to see King George III, and he didn't realize that Blackadder was disguised as, you know, Prince George, and decides to take uh, Blackadder with him. Uh, Blackadder, of course, you know, leaving, you know, with an evil grin. Yeah, he was, I guess he actually, for a while, pretended to be, um, you know, 
King George the Fourth. Meanwhile, uh, Baldric and the real King George um, were were there, and of course, Baldric was you know mourning over the death of like the actual Prince George. But then the prince wakes up, and then uh, he uh, mentions that he also had a case of cigarlo in his um, his uniform. But he double checks to see if he has it and realizes he accidentally left it on his dresser and then like goes back to being dead. And yeah, that was basically about it for uh, Black Arrow the Third. Um, definitely a pretty interesting series. Um, I would kind of say it's pretty much, you know, slightly better than Black Arrow 2, but like, you know, I would say they're both like almost like even and even. Um, they're definitely both pretty, uh, pretty humorous moments, uh, pretty uh, enjoyable characters to watch, and yeah, overall quite a joy to watch. So if you're a fan of like, you know, the first two series of Black Arrow, I'm sure you would probably really love Black Arrow the Third. And with that being said, that's about it for this episode of The Key from England. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to give it a like. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more episodes of The Key from England. Or just mediocre plush content in general. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think. That's about it. This is Tyler from The Character Workshop. Studying out. Next time, we're going to be talking about the fourth and final series of Blackadder. Uh, Blackadder goes forth.